<coughs> so we're kind of kind of getting a little preemptive on next week. So when we're drawing an object like this, we've got kind of three different types of line, three main types of lines we want to be able to draw. We want to be able to draw the outside of it, right? We want to be able to see the shape on the outside. It also would be nice to know what's going on inside of it, right? So it's actually got a couple steps down in there. It's got some stuff going on down in here. The inside there's taper. So you kind of be able to see from the side view what's going on inside of it. And then it'd be nice to have a center axis for it. So we know where the center is. So that's our three main types of things we want to show. No matter if it's a round piece like this, a square piece with holes. We want to see the outside, we want to see the inside. We want to see where centers are. Centers for holes this way, or center of the axis that way. So how do you think we can tell those different things? If you were making up a new way to do it, how would you be able to tell outside, inside, center? Cutaway. Cutaway. Yeah, we can do a cutaway. But still, how are you going to, if, even if we're just looking at the outside? Dotted line. Yeah, we can do dot lines, maybe the inside stuff. Right? Change, so we change what the line looks like. Maybe color, but if you're only got a thickness. pencil, then you really don't have color. You don't want to have a thing of color pencils, because then you get too artsy. <laughs> So, yeah, so we change the different line type, and we change the thickness of our line. Just a little bit, but just so we can see the differences. Okay? So that's called the alphabet of lines. So, in this class, we're going to use four basic ones. We have our object lines, which is the outside, which are our thick lines. We have hidden lines which is all the inside stuff. So here's showing where that hole is on the inside. It's thin. It's got dashes that are about an eighth of an inch long with a little bit of space between them. Okay. And then we have center lines, which is a long dash, then a little dash, then a long dash. And it's for, for a hole, we just have one little short dash in the middle of the center, the circle. For the axis, we just have one little dash in the middle of it. You don't need to try and get, this always happens, people, oh, I need to get one in, so I'll do a long dash, a little dash, a long dash, and they'll do that. That's too much. You just need one little dash in the middle, but it's thin. Rule of thumb is that you usually want the thin line about half as thick as the thick line. But you're practically, it's enough to be able to see the difference. So between these two lines, can you see a difference between those two? A little bit. A little bit, right? Yeah. You can see that this line is thinner than that line, right? Yeah. yeah. That's enough. Okay. If it was a little thinner, if I sharpened my pencil a little bit more, it would have been a little bit better. But that there is good. Thick line, thin line. I don't need to have it paper thin where I can't see this line. I don't need this line that thick. They just need to be preferably about twice as thick, but if you get the 0.5 and the 0.7, that's, that's like that. Did a point three and point seven, then it'd be a little bit thinner than that. So, and, so if you have a, a wood pencil or a thick lead pencil, it's just how sharp you sharpen it. If you have mechanical pencils, it's just which ones you have. Just to be able to see the difference. And that's just one line going once over it. Don't go back and forth. Don't go back and forth. If I get to see a line that's like that thick, or even real thick and dark. What happens is you do that, the thing is perfect, you bring it up to me, look, 
And then I see a line that's off or that you need to erase, that you can't erase now. So don't do it real thick, nice lines. I'll put this up here so you can look at it. So questions? On Moodle, there is this link for alphabetic lines. I recommend going to that. Because you did this little interactive thing. kind of takes you through all the different things. So it kind of takes you through them, and it goes through some of the other ones also. So it goes through dimension lines and all Everything else we're going to do. So go through that, take a look at it. Um, in your book, it has the one like kind of like this. Um, that all all books have one that's pretty much the same. Um, but I think we need our object lines or thick lines, hidden lines for inside things, and center lines. Every part we draw is going to have those three lines. Uh, first few weeks, we're not going to have circles. So we're not going to have center lines. But after that, we're still going to have these two. After the first couple of weeks, we'll have center lines, hidden lines, and object lines every, in every drawing. So out of those three, which one is most important? The object line, right? If you have two lines on top of each other, either an object line and a center line, or an object line and a hidden line, you show the object line because you want to see the outside of the part, right? That's the most important thing. And then after that, which one's more important, hidden or center? Hidden. Hidden, because that's an actual part of the, the part. So, um, like here, there's a hidden corner here to line up the center line. We show the hidden line, just because that's more important than the center line. Then center of the lines last. So we do all the, the visible stuff. We do the hidden stuff, then we do the center lines. Okay? Questions? <clears throat> yes, no. <clears throat> um, this is kind of some examples of how they work. Center lines stick out past the part also. So hidden lines are exactly where the stuff is in the part. Center lines stick out past, kind of give you a little frame of reference. We don't connect center lines between the views. You might see some old drawings where they have center lines connected between the views. Like they haven't started here and it goes all the way through the page. Usually we don't do that. Um, I kind of have some extra things. And we'll talk about this next week. Um, so over the next, or not next week, Thursday, right? I want you to, to pick up an object at home or some kind of block or something that you see and try and draw what you would do to, to describe that part. Usually we'll do three views, like a top, a front, a left, or a right, to, to describe it. Usually three, it's kind of, if you can do it less, do you need all three? No. Sometimes do we need more than three? Yeah. So the three is kind of the the default, the fallback. So I want you to, to pick something up at home and draw kind of three views of it. Um, see what it would, how you would show it. Okay. You need graph paper? Take a sheet of graph paper, or draw on the back of the one that you were just using. Um, 
then on what Thursday we'll do some more in class also with some of these the blocks we've got. Okay? Questions? All right.